Hi, everybody. My name is Hafa Lombardino, and this is Translation Confessional. I always recommend what I did that worked for me, of course. That is go slow. You can start traveling around your own country. I mean, it's your own culture, your own money, your own language. So you can start with small trips, you know, one week and then one month and see what happens. And then that's what I did. I started traveling to Argentina and then I went uh, to Mexico and then I went to Europe and then I went to Asia, you know. And now I don't know <laughs> where I can go next. But um, you can, you know, face your challenges a little bit. So you can start learning how to deal with your work. Maybe that's really stressful for you. Maybe you find that it's the best way to work because you are happy and relaxed. Being a nomad freelancer. Translation Confessional is back from spring break and we have some more interviews ready for you. Today Hoffa talks to Alejandra Toll, an audiovisual translator from Argentina who was a nomad freelancer before COVID, and is looking forward to choosing her next destination as soon as it is safe to travel the world again. In this interview, Alejandra shares some practical advice on what it takes to be a successful nomad translator and shares a bit about the places where she's been. If you watch the extended video interview on YouTube, you will also get to learn what Alejandra missed from home while traveling the world and where she would like to visit next. By the way, Alejandra is also a fellow podcaster, so click the link in this episode's description to check out her podcast in Spanish. We hope you enjoy this illuminating conversation and reach out to Alejandra if you would like to be a nomad freelancer too. A common requirement during translation and editing is to perform several corrections across a document to prepare it for translation, fix common mistakes, or ensure style guidance compliance. You can make this process significantly easier with the help of Multiple Find and Replace tool for Microsoft Word. With this tool, you can create lists of search and replace expressions and use them to perform global replacements automatically or to find all occurrences and review them in context before replacement. You can use the power of regular expressions to perform complex searches and replacements. The tool also enables you to format the found text, so you can use it to apply color highlighting, italics, and other formatting before or after translation. Multiple Find and Replace tool is part of TransTools Plus, a Microsoft Word plugin designed for translators, editors, content creators, and DTP specialists. If you want to check out TransTools Plus, go to this webpage, tinyurl.com slash tc dash TransTools Plus. I hope you like it! So I'm here with Alejandra today. She's from Argentina. She's a fellow podcaster, and she has amazing stories to tell us about being a nomad translator. So Alejandra, go ahead. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Sure. Like I love talking about traveling, so any opportunity that I have, it's welcome. Um, and of course, translation and traveling, like my love, my, my two loves, you know. Well, how can I begin? Um, I've gone full freelance in uh, 2001. Well, no, 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 sorry. That's not, that's when I, when I started translating. Uh, that was 2010. That's when I stopped uh, working. Um, I worked as a teacher a lot. And I stopped that and I started being like full freelancer. So that's when I started to fantasize about, you know, what's the difference if I'm working from home 
and then there's a part like electricity goes off or internet is not working so you go to a bar or a co-working space so i said what's the difference for my clients if i'm at home at a bar around the corner or four thousand kilometers away they 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 don't know it's the same for them so i started thinking about this and fantasizing but I'm all about small steps. So everything I do, it's like baby steps for everything. So I started small and then gradually increasing, you know, the the adventures till I ended up like in a, the last, my last trip was so amazing that it's like, I don't know if I can, you know, the bar is so high and then COVID as well, but <laughs> I was going to ask, so it was pre-COVID that you were doing all the nomad going around, right? Yes, yes, yes. COVID brought me back home because I was actually, I was in Asia. Uh, yeah. So I decided to come back uh, because things there were getting a little bit uh, dangerous and and here was okay, like in Latin America, everything was cool. So I said, I don't want to go back home yet, but I really want to leave Asia and be away from this. So I traveled to Colombia and then I said, okay, I'm going to start my way down slowly and continue traveling. But then when I arrived in Colombia, things got worse and I actually had to stay in the hotel for a couple of days in quarantine in Colombia and then Okay, everything got really bad and I called the embassy here and I said, well, okay, what, what's your advice? And they said, come back home as soon as you can. So yeah, I bought a ticket and came back home. But well, I'm waiting to start again. I'm waiting for COVID to go <laughs> finally one day and be on the road again. Okay. Oh, that's, uh, it's crazy because if you're used to that lifestyle and then something that is out of your control, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to follow the rules and you don't want to get caught in a place that uh, maybe um, you, you have a visa and then it's going to expire because you're in lockdown. So yeah, I just, I cannot imagine how crazy that must be. But tell us about uh, what it is that you do. Uh, you do a lot of subtitling, is that it? Yeah, I mainly do subtitling. Uh, like I'm an audiovisual translator and I also work with dubbing and um, some other stuff but yeah subtitling dubbing I do a little bit of literary translation also uh, but it, my, my main thing is subtitling and dubbing or adaptation mainly but more of a technical question, um, because uh, if you work with some platforms and they have IP address to make sure that everything is, you know, uh, protected because of how um, they will send you the videos to the platform to make sure that it's you logging in and everything. Did you run into any problems when you were just traveling around and you had to work with uh, clients that had some kind of setup like that? Uh, no, not really. No. Most of them work with a platform, so you have uh, your password or your two-way verification thing with your phone, so uh, that's really safe. And some other clients, well, they send me the videos, but as I have a non-disclosure agreement signed, uh, that's it. So no, not, not, not those kind of problems, other kinds of problems I had. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, because I come from a technical background, I was just thinking about, you know, all the nightmares of like VPN and trying to say, no, I'm still in Argentina. If a client, you know, sees that your IP address is different, internet connection and all that, but okay, good. But what kind of problems did you have then? What did you have to maybe improvise because you're not in your home office and you have to try to work with what you're given? Well, for me, working and traveling at the same time it's all about improvisation i mean you have to change every day or every week your your setting i, I don't know your your desktop is not i mean everything is different even the weather you're working sometimes you are in a very hot country and then you travel and then it's rainy season and then well whatever so 
you have to adapt all the time. It's not that, you know, so one of the things that I learned uh, traveling and working at the same time is always having kind of, a, I have two separate, I mean, three separate budgets. Um, one is the most important one for me. That is like the, the I go home tomorrow. That's how kind of what I call it, you know? The only way the only way I take a plane and I travel is if I know I can come back home the next day, just if anything happens, you know? It's not that I'm going, like, and then it happened. COVID happened and I had to use that. I mean, I had the money to go back home the next day. So that's one thing. Uh, and the other one is for um, my equipment. You are traveling and it's, it's probable that you will have some problems, you know, maybe your laptop is stolen or like it happened to me, it, it, you know, it collapses and you have to continue working and maybe you are, um, I mean, you have to have the money to buy a computer the next day, go to a shopping mall or whatever, or Amazon or whatever, and buy your stuff, uh, head headsets, uh, a new keyboard, everything has I mean, you need to have the money to replace anything fast because you cannot stop working. So, oh no, I'm in the middle of, um, I'm on an island in the middle of Thailand. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to finish. No, you have to do it. So um, I had these problems, for example, uh, my computer collapsed and I had to buy a new one. Uh, that's one of the biggest problems sometimes it's just the charger but i i mean i've traveled for many years so i've had a lot of different problems like sometimes you get stuck in an airport because your flight is delayed uh well that's great for you know working when you are stuck for five hours you have nowhere to go you are in an, a, an airport you cannot go back to the city because it's you know it's not time wise to go back so you work but uh, uh, the the issues that I had are all not work related. Like work related, I just through one time I needed to to send um, documents, and I was I was on an island in the middle of Thailand, and uh, FedEx was not available there, so it was kind of a problem because I had to sign something and send them. Um, but well, my client was understanding and they waited for me for two weeks. And then when I went to Bangkok for my plane, I sent the documents. But that was the only thing. It was not that. Um, it's not that hard to work on, on the way, but you have to be prepared to adapt, as I said, to work very comfortably or very uncomfortably. <laughs> Sometimes you have to kind of have some kind of organization, but also be open to improvisation, like you said, because you have to know what you have to do, but sometimes how you're going to do it, it's going to be completely different day to day. So that's, that's amazing. Kudos to you because I don't know if I could, if I would be able to make it. I did a lot of like, you know, working while my kids are having soccer practice or swimming class and I could have, you know, my tablet or my phone and just do something or even the laptop sometimes. But yeah, it's just amazing what you do and just hopping from place to place and just uh, thrive amid the improvisation. Yeah, but I don't think that's that different. Uh... Like you work when your kids are at soccer practice and they work on rainy days. If I'm traveling, for example, I'm on the beach and there's a rainy day, I say, okay, we just work now. And then when the sun comes up, you know, okay, let's go to the beach. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to be organized, but the main thing uh, to, I mean, what you have to consider is that you travel slow. It's not. It's one thing to travel just being a tourist when you can go two days here, three days there. Um, when you are working at the same time, you travel slow. So, for example, I was in a. It was very funny because in Agra, in India, where where the Taj Mahal is, everyone goes just for one day, 
or maybe you know two days one night just to go to the place you see the building you'll take your photos and then you continue your travels i was there for two weeks and everybody was so um amazed you know people like there was a place uh, where i went for breakfast and then i worked there all morning i had lunch and then and the guy says like you're still here where are you going like come on your travels are i said oh i'm working so i was comfortable i found like a nice place to work a nice place to stay and it gives you the advantage of getting to know more locals and the life of the people around you um so you have to be ready to do that i mean in some places you stay you stay for longer um, and then you work in the morning you sightsee in the afternoon or maybe you work two days straight and then you take one full day off that's that's what i did for example in new york i was i had like a big project i was just arriving and i spent two or three days working and i would literally look at the side of the window and said like new york the whole city is out there and i've been here three days and i haven't seen anything and i would you know working and then look up look at the window and say wait for me new york i'm coming just one more day and then you know you have your your things done and then you take two days off and you're free to whatever now, but how amazing it is that you can actually just, uh, okay, I'll just crunch time right now, I'll work on this, but then when you walk out of the door, you have a new place to explore. That's amazing. Yeah, that's wonderful. Instead of, you know, turning off computer and turn on TV with some Netflix, you just go outside and there's the Eiffel Tower or is the, you know, Central Park or whatever, the Taj Mahal, whatever you are. Or you just have to take a break and you need some coffee and you go outside your hotel and you are, you know, in Myanmar. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> nice. And would you say then that because of that style, you would live like a local, like a native for days or weeks instead of, like you said, doing the tourism thing? And um, what, what were the places that you visited, like the best place or then the worst place? Um, not just because of work conditions, but maybe because of the atmosphere. What, I'm just curious about the places that you've been to. Well, I, ha I have to say that the worst place and the best place, it's one, and that is India. And it's weird because it's the best place and the worst place at the same time, all the time. It's like I, I, I compare it uh, to the food. You know that Indian food is delicious, but it's so intense. And it can give you, you know, you can have consequences, to say the least. So the same thing happens there with the people and traveling. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And at the same time, it's, oh, my God, this is so intense. That's, that's weird. Um, but... For me, uh, I, I travel, I can say I'm so lucky, I'm so grateful that I traveled a lot. But my the best place I've been to is because I was, it wasn't in, in any plan. It was something that happened in the spur of the moment. It's the country that I never thought I would go in my dreams. And it was a really like mystical and philosophical experience like i had my you know um it was the best 28 days and that was myanmar um and i went to a retreat there and that was something i wanted to do for so long and i was about to do that in bali you know but bali the retreats that i found there were how can I say this without some? Okay, well, just for tourists, you know, when you have to pay a lot of money to, and they give you the the best uh, juice, whatever, and they meditate. But I wanted the real thing, you know. I wanted the the real thing, and I got that, and it was very 
very awakening and very hard and it was really intense and as you you do the retreat for 10 days you are not allowed to speak to anyone of course you're not allowed to have your computer and it was the first time in my adult life that i was not connected and not near any device for 10 days you know when you travel you have to be connected all the time because you know time difference and maybe you are you know visiting some monument and at the same time you are answering emails for clients you know that's the life it's not, it's not that you are on holidays you are always worrying about work and maybe you cannot go to or, or you have to um cut your travels short because the internet connection is not that good and then you have a you know a proposal let's do this okay you have to download this video but i can't don't i cannot do it in this city so i have to move um but that was the first time in 10 days not phone not computer no talking and it was so weird but it was so good it sounds like a, a wonderful idea right now. If I could just spend, you know, 24 hours like that, that would be perfect. <laughs> but I think that just with COVID, because we're more connected, because we're just, everybody's online. That's all we can do. A lot of people that didn't experience what we do every day of working online, work remotely, people are working remotely. The kids are going to school remotely. So it's, you know, just that so unpredictable and uh, fluctuating. So um, that sounds really good. And I think that a lot of people now, if they're listening to this, uh, they're gonna be fantasizing about, oh, I want to do that. And I was wondering if you have any advice of like, do this, but don't do that. Because I, I know that a lot of freelancers just are itching to go travel somewhere and they have to continue working because for freelancers, if you don't work, you don't get paid. So how can you, you know, survive? So what are the practical uh, kind of tips that you would have? Well, the first, the first thing you do is uh, you prepare your budget, as I, as I mentioned before for you know unexpected things that might happen and you have to solve really quickly then something that is essential for for travelers and non-travelers but for travelers even more it's um an external disk for your stuff you know in case your computer is stolen or it breaks or whatever you just unplug that and you plug it somewhere else you can go to a co-working you can rent a laptop or you can have whatever, but you have your information. It's not that you are going to, you know, lose. It's the same thing when you travel at home, but when you are working, you know, uh, when you are traveling, I mean, it can get stolen. Uh, it can, you know, maybe the temperature, maybe it gets wet. Sometimes you are with your laptop, you know, in, in an airport and, and you drop your bag and uh, whatever. So uh, that is one. And another thing that it's uh, really, really good, it's always when you get to a new country, mainly, uh, you buy a SIM card for your phone. If you have a, a phone with two slots, that, that's great because you have your SIM card and then you add just the, the one with the data. Um, I consider that, you know, an investment for my work because sometimes, you know, you book a hotel, they say that they have good internet and then it's not that good. Or, um, I don't know, you, you go for a walk and then you are really tired, it's too hot, so you decide to go into, you know, you go to get a coffee and say, oh, maybe I can work here and you get your, you take your laptop, you work. And of course your phone, you have to be able to answer emails or be connected and if you have like, one day trip you know you leave in the morning and then you come back to the hotel in the after in the afternoon you're not going to work but maybe you can answer some emails or you can you know check some stuff so uh you have to be connected and not don't rely on the wi-fi provided by the places you go so it's an investment it's not that expensive nowadays it's just so easy uh, I remember the first time I traveled, it was not like that. Now it's just so easy. And you can get Wi Fi like anywhere. And speaking of that, one thing that I discovered now in this my last trip, um, and I loved, uh, are libraries, public libraries in cities. You, I, I, I mean, 
not in India, but uh, in all the cities in Australia and New Zealand, and of course in Europe, uh, every city has a public library. And you go with your laptop and it's a great place to work because of course it's quiet, and of course you have Wi-Fi, um, and of course you can stay there. And also you get to see the um, architecture, you can get a book, you can see how you know students are there and people, you know, local people working there, you can meet people. Um, I remember I, went, I was in a Christchurch, I fell in love with that library. I had a very like intense project when I was there and I went there like every day for a week and a half it was my daily schedule, like I woke up, I went to the library, I work, I had a coffee, and it had like a really big um, window that looked at the city and uh, there was like a church that had been destroyed in an earthquake, so it was like old and the bricks and it was like, like I was in a movie. And the library also had like events, so one day you get there and it's like, I don't know, seeds exchange. So you see all the local people exchanging plants and seeds and you can plant these. And, and then some other day is like puzzles day and you see the kids making puzzles. It was, a, I loved the, the, uh, the, the library. I loved it. And it's good to get to know the libraries of the cities and it's great for work. So that's one of the, the things I, I recommend also. And uh, well, what else? Make the most out of the weather, you know, that it's, uh, if it's really, really hot, you can work during midday. So you stay in air conditioning and then you get up early and you go see the city when it's not like the really hot hours and then you go back, you work and then, or maybe if you are traveling in the cold weather and you want to go, you know, right in midday when it's the most warm, you know, whatever, uh, you can work around the weather. If it is a rainy day, well, okay, no worries. You stay in, you plan your week, you work, you get some things done, uh, you answer your emails, and then, um, and then you go. And of course, you know your clients. You now I know my clients, and I know. Uh, some of them, for example, I never say like I'm traveling, blah, 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 because if you work with platforms and it's just all tickets coming and going and there is no really a personal interactions, like there's no point in making them anxious because I'm traveling. If I, you know, keep my deadlines, if I answer my emails for them is exactly the same. And I, I don't add it, you know, something for them to worry about. But there are some other clients that have a different relationship and they know exactly, you know, I because uh, they know my, my time, the time difference every time I, I move around um, and they know that I'm traveling and because that, but that depends on the client, you know, the relationship you have uh, with them. So sometimes I say, sometimes I don't say, sometimes I take, and that's, that's something important when you move around cities, you have to, uh, you know, set a, a notice or maybe your email, like I won't be available till tomorrow because sometimes you say, okay, well, but there's internet at the airport, but sometimes there's not, or you say, okay, no worries. I will get there too. So I'll start working at by six, I will have everything done. And then the, the plane is delayed and you cannot do that. So whenever you have to move, from one city to another, and one place to another, you know, work around your deadlines and, you know, have the, the space for, you know, surprises. And travel insurance, that's one thing. You know, health insurance when you're traveling, that's really, really important. Now with COVID, I think it's going to be mandatory, but sometimes you can travel without it. I never recommend that because you never know what can happen and you are far away from home. So that's uh, that's essential for me when I travel. Well, co-workings are very, I mean, not all the time. I don't really like to go there all the time because it's like, um, you know, it's like you go to, I, I, 
went to a co-working uh, on an island in Thailand. That was very good. It was very comfortable. Comfortable. I met really nice people because it's a nice place for networking also. But you are surrounded by travelers. So you are like, you know, in a small world, you don't get the local feeling like I, I love when I travel. I'd rather go to a bar where, you know, you can talk to the waiter or you can interact with the people. But sometimes co-working are, you know, like uh, some peaceful days with uh, stable internet. Um, I rented a um, screen uh, because I've been working with my laptop and, you know, after a while, it's kind of, I started missing my big screen back home so um i rented one for for a week so it was great because i went with my laptop plugged it in and i have that big thing for me um so that's why i say you know you have to adapt one day you're going to be in a five-star environment you know with internet um whatever and then some other day you are in one star hostel this is the only thing you could get or you wanted to have you know some more if you're traveling alone and if you want some party or you want some other types of connections you can stay at other kinds of places but everyone knows you know your comfort zone and of course i'm of course going to advise get out of that but you know uh the comfort zone is different for everyone so i'm not going to say what is comfortable or not for me because it might be of course it's different for you or for anyone else so um be ready for that you know uh because that's the fun of it like being outside your element or whatever yeah and just uh yeah. that's what i was thinking when you you know working also with literature and working with audiovisual that we have to kind of connect with the language and and um let's see what i'm trying to say you're trying to people watch in a way so you're going to different places you're experiencing different cultures you're watching people living in a different way than maybe you're used to so i think that's amazing a very rich experience for you as a language person right and yeah. uh, do you speak other languages for the, the, these other countries that you visited or um, were you able to pick up something here or there yeah i always try to learn basics like good morning thank you hello you know just to uh because i'm visiting a country so you know you want to be uh, nice with the people um but I forgot most of them, but no, I, I speak a little bit of French. Uh, Portuguese when I drink caipirinhas. <laughs> As I said, I can speak like four words, but if you if you take me and drop me on, you know, a beach in Rio and give me five caipirinhas, I can speak. <laughs> it's very similar to Spanish. Yes, I, I think we can, can relate. <laughs> yeah, we can relate. Yeah, I had experiences with a lot of people like, you know, we're partying in college times 20 years ago. And then, uh, yeah, just people from all over Latin America and we start communicating just fine because, yeah, with some caipirinha, some, yeah. So just uh, <laughs> let your hair down and everything's okay. Everybody's speaking Portuguese from both sides. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you, we know how to pronounce certain words that like 80% of the time, are going to be near the meaning that we want to say. And, and I remember something else. It's something that, uh, it's one of the hard things for me because I'm really cu curious and I want to be everywhere and, and know all the places and, and all that. But when you travel so much, you have to learn how to let go this idea of seeing it all because you cannot. Sometimes you go to a place and you have to work, you have a deadline, and then you have your flight booked, you know, for the next city, and you weren't able to go to that museum or to that monument you wanted to go, and you have to say, okay, well, next time, that's my mantra. I said, okay, next time, no? So you send the universe the, uh, the idea that you are going back to this place, 
um, because it's really frustrating because when you start traveling you want to go everywhere and then you meet people and say oh have you been there or have you seen that and oh not yet and then you don't you have to start saying okay but I need to work it's really important to find if you're taking a long trip uh, to get you know a space to have the holidays within the holidays because let's not forget we are working you know so we have problems to solve deadlines to meet so sometimes it's you are like in between you are not a tourist but at the same time you are not fully working because you are sightseeing so sometimes you can take two or three days or a week and say okay now these are my holidays so i'm going to uh set my google gmail account like you know of office till blah blah and then you close your laptop you take your backpack and you do something different because it gets tiring because you have to manage moving um you know if you move a lot you have to you spend your days booking places to sleep taking um you know um the, the schedules for planes trains buses and then um packing and unpacking all the time and and then of course all of that on top of your normal work um so it, it's tiring it's not that you are on the beach drinking caipinhas and watching you know the waves uh no you're you're moving you are rushing from the plane to the deadline to you know the hotel um so i always take a few days planned days to say okay now i'm i'm not working that's important yeah that's perfect because uh this image that oh you can just you know sit back at the beach and just work especially with uh book translations you know oh you're gonna be at a cafe or the beach have you tried to work on your laptop at the beach there's like sand all over the place the sun the screen that's not that so you have to just kind of you know separate things of like yeah i'm in this place i'm uh, you know traveling but there's times that i get crunch time to work and then you enjoy for the rest of the day and um i think it's perfect because when we're just you know in our home office like you said we just walk away from the the work the computer and you just turn on the tv or you just do things that sometimes you don't get to see your own city as much but that way you just you're forced to see like new york is out there i want to go and visit places and see people so that's perfect it's a very personal experience and it also depends a lot on where you travel it's not the same to travel to india than traveling to uh germany for example or in latin america it's very different i mean um considering where where you come from and where you go how far that is from your own culture how comfortable you are um, and it also depends on the experience itself uh, it's it's something really really personal um, so if if anyone uh, who's listening want to to start traveling I always recommend what I did that worked for me of course um, that is go slow you can start traveling around your own country where you have uh, I mean it's your own culture your own money your own language so you can start with small trips you know one week and then one month and see what happens and then uh, that's what I did I started traveling through Argentina and then I went uh, to Mexico and then I went to Europe and then I went to Asia you know and now I don't know <laughs> where I can where I can go next but um, you can, you know, uh, like pace your challenges uh, a little bit so you can start learning how to, you know, uh, deal with your work. Maybe that's really stressful for you. Maybe you find that it's the best way to work because you're happy and relaxed. Let's wait for COVID to go, to go and pack our bags and start traveling again or for the first time if you are thinking about it I think it's something that at least once in your life you have to experience what it is 
it's wonderful. It's a different way of uh, of living your life. I'm not saying like drop your life and go five uh, years without a house, but the feeling of not having, uh, you know, a house <laughs> back home. I, I had it that you know there was one one trip that I I, I let go of my apartment. I put my stuff in, in uh, different friends' houses, my father's house, you know, and then I went. And all my house was in my backpack. Um, and it hasn't, I mean, please, age is not a thing. You can do this on your 20s, on your 30s. I'm on my 40s. I'm, I'm planning to do it again. Um, you have to change maybe some stuff, you know. Maybe you're not going to go partying in the same way you go when you're 20. But or maybe you need a more comfortable bed because then in the morning it's a little bit harder if you sleep, you know, or you need a private place because you know you're a bit okay. But you can adapt and you can do it anyway, you can travel anyway. It's not that you're never too old and it's wonderful. And if you continue working, you continue making money, so you can. It's not that you, as we as freelancers, we have to think like if I'm going away for one month it's like one month I don't have any projects and one month of no money but if you travel and work at the same time it's endless you're working you're making money here and there and um, I don't know if you want to add something else but I mean the, 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 I think the last question that I can ask was um, uh, if there was anything that you missed from home while living uh, living around I have to say the food sometimes when i travel i remember an anecdote i was traveling um in mexico and when i came back uh i went to see a friend and it was dinner time and she said like what what do you want to eat do you want and i said i want pasta with oil and cheese i said but that's something like really stupid yes i want the lamest softest most stupid food like pasta olive oil and cheese that's it and i said um if there are uh, argentinian people listening i asked for monitos and that is at least for me it's a kind of pasta uh that i associate with uh, my childhood for some reason they are kind of bows pasta with the form of a of a bow, a bow. I don't know, and I said, I want monitos, and that's it, because, and then uh, traveling through India or these Asian countries, sometimes it's like, I just want a piece of bread and a slice of cheese, and that would make me so happy, because, you know, the food is, and of course, of course, mate. I travel with my mate, but... If the trip is too long, maybe you don't have any sherba available, you know, the leaves. Um, so, yeah, mate is something that I really, really, really miss when I travel. I try to take it with me, but sometimes, you know, when you are traveling in Asia for a year, where are you going to get sherba? Nowhere. Yeah. So, and I can only imagine that, you know, how maybe how you package it, it can get you in trouble because if people don't know what uh, mate is, it's like, you know, what is this? It looks like pot, yeah. <laughs> it looks like, you know, something else. So you can get in trouble, yeah, especially going into yeah. airplanes or something. Yeah, yeah, it happened to me once in an airport. I, like they asked me like, what's this? And I was like, come on, it's Cerva Mate. You see, it's the packaging, you see, you know, it's, it, it was closed and you have, you know, it's, it's not in a, in a bag, it's, you know, and it's, it's proper packaging and but now uh, uh that's that's uh yeah that's but there are oh there's always an argentinian person around and then well now after covid that's one of the things i think we lost but before that i would just see someone with a mate and jump on them and said how can i have one please i miss it so much and we would share you know and now well, maybe not. <laughs> you can't share. You have to bring your own bobby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the COVID thing that broke Argentinian hearts. Like, pairing mate is part of our personality, you know. Our, in, and now it's so hard. 
walk. Yeah, so anyway. no no share won't be is anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> no. Which is funny because uh, when we travel, uh, the first, even inside the United States, the first thing that we miss is Mexican food. Because if we try to have Mexican food anywhere else, we're so close to the border that, you know, it does not taste the same. And even uh, when you go to Texas, then it's different Mexican food there. So we just miss specific Mexican food here from Southern California. So that's kind of funny. But I can understand that, and uh, yeah, uh, mate is not easy to get everywhere. And the, and sometimes it's just the comfort food. Like I said, the pasta is something so simple that you can make it yourself, but it's just that thing to just bring you back home. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I was in, in Jodhpur in India, and it was the first hostel I was traveling with a friend at the time because I, I don't always travel alone. Like I always, I have a lot of friends who travel, oh, obviously so sometimes we get together and we share one country and then separate ways and then you meet someone and you decide to go you know together for a while and then you go separate ways and i was there and we've been traveling through india for a while and we got to a hostel with a kitchen and the funny thing was that we ate pasta like five times in a row because we missed uh pasta so much <laughs> Yeah, it's like right. food is something it's great because you you eat new stuff and now for example i didn't like spicy food that much and now i loved it because i've been you know i learned how to uh, it's an acquired taste um but after a while you you miss the simple things like the simple things but of course you are so fascinated with new things that it's a small price to pay if you are traveling the world i mean eventually you will eat your pasta when you go back you find a supermarket and then you make some pasta and that's it it's not that hard exactly exactly and that's the thing that uh in english we have a, a it's an expression for that which is comfort food and i don't we just don't have the same thing in portuguese we would say you know um homemade food or grandma's food, yeah. comida caseira, comida da vovó, but it's not the same thing as the comfort food because it just it's right there in the in the the name comfort. So I totally get it. Yeah, yeah, it's that's that's something. But again, it's a small price to pay. I I would uh, I can wait for that and 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 travel and eat new stuff. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't try so many new things. Um, but I always find new stuff, you know, new fruit, new ways of cooking, new seasonings or new stuff that you put on your food all the time. So that's, it's, it's a very good thing. And at the same time, it makes you miss your homemade food, your comfort food, the simple food that we eat at, at home, you know, but nah, I'd rather travel. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the experience is just priceless for sure. Perfect. It's good. <laughs> and the, the one last question I have is if COVID wasn't an issue and you could just plan your next trip right now, where would you go? That's a tough one because one part of me would love to go back to what I called my island in Thailand. It's where I was there. I was there for two months and I had like, I love that life. But I'm not very keen on repeating places because I want to go to new places. So I think I have two two ways to go. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I really, I definitely move countries and I go to live somewhere else, like uh, to settle somewhere else. Or traveling wise, I would love to go to Turkey, Egypt, Greece, that area. Um, that's what I, I, I haven't been there and I would love, or Eastern Europe a little bit because I've been there, but not all of the places I, I was there. Um, and I traveled what I, I felt it was a little bit fast. So I would love to go back Eastern Europe. It's a nice place. It's cheap and it's historically and culturally super rich. Um, I would love to go to Croatia. That's where my grandparents. Well, you see, the whole world. I have a long list. 
But okay, if I have to buy a ticket now, I would say Egypt. I not I didn't do the the globe thing when when you turn it and put your finger on because I didn't have one. But I I took the street view little guy from Google Maps and I dropped it somewhere and I said, "Okay, that's where I will go." And I went and that was uh Morocco. Oh wow. And I finally I went there. Yeah, it's just like, "Okay, I have to go to Africa now." <laughs> But well, Nice. Oh, we can only dream. So let's just hope that, you know, the COVID nightmare is uh, over, that we're all healthy and we can travel. Yeah. And um, yeah, let me let me know next time you go somewhere. I would love to know and send pictures. <laughs> and I hope that anyone listening is inspired to just start planning for when it's safe to go around and uh, try out the nomad uh, lifestyle. Because, uh, yeah, it's that's what we're meant for. We're freelancers. We can just work from anywhere. Just figure out the um, time zone difference and you're sad. So, yeah. And of course, if anyone has questions, I am I'm willing to answer. I mean, everything that I know, I can share. If I don't know, we can find out together. But and just to reinforce it, people have to listen to your podcast as well, because uh, I already recommended it here. But it is so entertaining for anyone that speaks Spanish, understands Spanish, is learning Spanish. I really enjoy it to get the language part and also to get all the things that you share, because it's, it's such a honest and entertaining way i really had a, have a lot of fun listening to yo traductora which you would say differently how do you say it yo traductora yes i i <laughs> i can't say it beautifully like you do yo traductora yes it just it sounds like i'm not it's saying it correctly like, it's yeah. when you when you someone is like yeah. show. Show. That's it. <laughs> But I, I highly yeah. <laughs> recommend it because it's just brutally honest, like I said, because it's uh, it's like you're just telling us stories and just talking about uh, what it is like to be a freelance translator. So I really appreciate uh, and uh, look forward to new episodes. And um, I really appreciate that you took the time to talk to me today and share a little bit of your dream you. world of being a nomad translator, because uh, I hope that we can experience this a little bit all of us when it's safe to go again yes thank you very much for having me it was it was super fun thank you send us an email at our lombardino at wordawareness.com or leave a voice message on the translation confessional anchor page If we get enough feedback and voice messages, we can go back to this subject and post a special podcast episode with everyone's opinion on this very same theme. By the way, our anchor page is anchor.fm slash translation dash confessional. We look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned for weekly episodes and subscribe to Translation Confessional through your favorite podcast app.